One of the problems with recruiting for investment banking is not the knowledge or skills you acquire, but the access to talk with real investment bankers to put your best foot forward. Our sponsor, WSO Academy, can provide those connections with 60 head mentors who are finance professionals at top firms like Goldman, Centerview, and JP Morgan. Imagine being able to get on the phone within 24 hours with one of the Academy's 1,300 mentors right before a critical interview. Get on the waitlist for WSO Academy today by clicking the link in the show notes or by visiting wallstreetoasis.com slash academy. All right, all right. Welcome to Investment Banking Insights, the only podcast dedicated to helping you learn both the technical and non-technical aspects of the investment banking process. My name is Alex Mason, and I am your host. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are getting into a new section today, and I'm really excited about it. We've gone through all sorts of things. We've gone through the accounting. We've gone through valuation. We've gone through enterprise and equity value, DCFs, mergers and acquisitions, and now... We made it. We made it to leverage buyouts, ladies and gentlemen, LBOs, LBOs. And before we go any further, I just want to say thank you again for listening to the show. All of you who have downloaded and listened to every single episode and you let me know. And I'm just I'm so grateful and, and happy that I'm providing value to you and that you're learning and growing as a result of this. So thank you for listening. Now, today's question is a big one. It's this. Walk me through a LBO model. Walk me through a LBO model. We've talked about DCF models. We've talked about mergers and acquisitions models, but we have not yet talked about LBO models. So let's go ahead and dig into this for the next few minutes. Now, in order to answer this question, we have to first know what a LBO is. <laughs> what is an LBO? Well, an LBO is an abbreviation for leveraged buyout leveraged buyouts. And what is a leveraged buyout? This is really the first question that we need to address. A leveraged buyout is when a company, usually a private equity firm, borrows money to acquire another business. And then at some point in the future, the firm sells the business for a profit. And it's known as a leveraged buyout because the PE firm will typically use a lot of debt in the transaction. And by doing this, they minimize the equity that they need to put into the deal. Now, you may be asking yourself, like, why would you minimize the equity you put into the deal and maximize the debt? Well, the thing is, this act increases the return on the cash that the private equity firm can get. So if the business itself generates a higher annualized return on capital than the cost of the debt, then the PE firm and its investors get to benefit financially from the upside of that leverage. So that's what a leverage buyout is all about. You're buying companies, you're usually using a lot of debt to do so. So there's minimal equity in the deal. The business grows, you improve it, somehow value is added. And then years down the line, you sell it for multiple and you make some money off of it. That's what an LBO is. So now that we've defined fundamentally what a LBO is all about, here are the basics of creating the model. And there are five steps. So we're going to go through this step by step. Number one is we have to make some assumptions. We have to make some assumptions about the deal. So we need to assume several variables, things like the purchase price or the debt to equity ratio. You know, how much debt do we use versus equity? What is the interest rate on the debt that we're assuming? And then we also have to assume fundamentals about the projections of the company's performance itself. What are the revenue growth assumptions for the company, margins, et cetera. So step one is make assumptions. Step two is define the sources and uses of capital for the deal. Sources and uses. This is a concept we haven't really explored before, but sources and uses just means where is the money coming from and where is the money going? Where is the money coming from and where is it going? So you might have, for example, 
the way that private equity firms are usually structured is they have general partners. These are the people who actually work at the private equity firm. And then you have other people who are passive investors who are called the limited partners. These are people who buy into the fund and they don't actually do anything but provide the capital. So the PE firm may contribute a little bit of equity to the deal, but they're usually going to get most of their money for their deals from this pool of capital provided by their limited partners. So those are different sources of capital, right? You might get equity from your limited partners, equity from your general partners, and then you also are very likely to have a large amount of money for the deal financed by a bank. So financed by debt. So that's a source of capital when you borrow money. Now, as far as uses of cash, what's going to be done to with all of this money? Well, of course, the transaction is going to take place, right? You're going to need to buy the business at a certain price. And then there might be other uses of cash. Maybe there's a specific plan that the private equity firm has to improve the business. Maybe they're going to cut out inefficiencies. Maybe they're going to scale operations and they can infuse this business with some money in order to make those changes. So there's sources and uses of capital for the deal. That's step two. Step number three is to adjust the company's balance sheet. Now the balance sheet is definitely going to change. This business is basically being the entire capital structure of a business is going to be changed as a result of a leveraged buyout, right? So remember on the balance sheet, we have three sections, assets, liabilities, and equity. Now on the asset side, you would add in things like goodwill and other intangibles based on what's being paid for the business. And on the liabilities and equity side, you would adjust for the amount of debt being added to the balance sheet, as well as any changes in equity. So step three is adjust the company's balance sheet. Step number four is we're going to project out the company's three financial statements over time. We're going to project the financial statements out over time. So one main thing to look for is because we're loading this company with so much debt, theoretically in these deals, we want to look at how much debt is going to be paid off per year based on the business's projected cash flows. So of course, we want to make sure that the business itself can pay off the debt because if it can't, then you might not be able to get a decent multiple by the time that you sell it. And that brings us to step number five, which is to project the exits, project the exit of the business. At a certain point, the private equity firm is going to sell this business and they're going to try to make money off of it. So they're going to assume in your model, a certain EBITDA multiple to see how much you think you can sell this business for? Is it five times EBITDA, seven times EBITDA, 10 times EBITDA? And then based on that multiple, you can calculate in your model what the return to equity investors is. And that's the final step. So you essentially, you are figuring out how much money the investors are going to make. So just as a recap for these five steps, here's what we've got. Step number one is we're gonna make some assumptions about the deal. Step number two is we're going to define the sources and uses of the capital for the deal. Step number three is we're going to adjust the company's balance sheet because the capital structure is changing. Step number four is we're going to project out the company's three financial statements over time. And then step number five is we're going to project the exits of the business. And that my friends is how you do an LBO model, the basics of an LBO model. I've learned a lot through this process going through these steps, and I hope that you have too. I think it's always interesting with these model questions. There's always kind of a lot packed into the answer, right? With DCF models, with merger and acquisitions models, and now with LBO models, there's always a lot of steps and a lot of things to learn and understand. So I think that's a uh, that's, it's important to really get these concepts. And I think that's why reflected in the download numbers for this show, those are some of the more popular episodes because there's just a lot packed in there. And there's some pretty fundamental big picture concepts that are important to understand. So 
I hope you've enjoyed this episode here on Investment Banking Insights. We're going to be continuing with leverage buyouts, my friends. And so join me next time as we continue to talk about LBOs. I hope you have an incredible, incredible day. Take care.